Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to ABB India Limited's Q2 April to June quarter and half yearly CY 2024 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And any unauthorized recording of this call is strictly prohibited. The recording will be made available on the company's NCB's website subsequently. I now hand the conference over to Mr. T.K. Treeter, Chief Financial Officer of ABB India Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Michelle. Very good morning to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Q2 April to June AMBA Investor Call. So I have with me here Mr. Sanjeev Sharma, uh, MD of ABB in India. So I have also Sanjeev Arora, who leads the motion division. And I have uh, <coughs> Kiran Dutt and Ganesh Kutavade from Electrification Business and Subrata Karmakar from Robotics. Right? So over to you, Sanjeev, just to start off to give a feedback as to how the quarter went. Uh, thank you, Sridhar. Uh, next slide. So those of you who are familiar with ABB in India and also those who may have joined for the first time, uh, an overview about ABB India. We are in India um, doing business for the last 74 years. We are manufacturing in the country for the last 74 years. We are in 75th year this year. And um, we operate four verticals, namely electrification, motion, process automation, robotics, and discrete automation. And collectively, we have 18 business divisions uh, organized under these four verticals. Uh, in electrification, uh, you may know that we have solutions around distribution solutions, which is the medium voltage switch gear, uh, which powers the cities, large industries, and infrastructure projects and also automate and provide more reliable power to the large consumers. Smart power, smart building is the uh, switch gear, low voltage switch gear businesses, and they are the businesses which really help uh, uh, the infrastructure as well as industry uh, to distribute power uh, with the low voltage uh, uh, technology. And then we have installation products, service, and the EV portfolio. Motion is all about energy efficiency. So our products uh, in drives, whether it's low voltage drive, medium voltage drives, uh, NEMA motors, IECLV motors, large motor generators, they uh, positively contribute to customers' greenhouse emission uh, uh, you know, possibilities when they use it because they are highly efficient uh, equipment when they are employed into different uh, high energy consuming uh, projects or, or infrastructure projects. Process automation is all about, uh, again, energy efficiency and automating core process industries, be it in the energy area, process industries, marine and ports, measurement and analytics. And robotics and discrete automation is all about uh, providing the next generation of productivity for the manufacturing and uh, and, and the shop floors, be it in automotive, electronics, uh, fast-moving consumer goods companies, and many other applications, wherein the automation helps to improve the productivity of the uh, plants. In, in the country, we operate in five manufacturing locations, namely Nashik, Baroda, Faridabad, uh, and uh, Bangalore. And we have 25 plants in these locations. And we uh, serve our customers with uh, 28 sales offices and service offices across the country. And we have a very strong uh, uh, channel partners or integrators or, uh, in different categories uh, of the businesses, which help us to reach even the deeper uh, side of the markets in Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 markets, wherein our serviceability is enhanced by our uh, partners. Going to the business highlights of the last quarter, uh, we recorded a strong performance with the orders and revenues growing by 13%. Uh, 
and we see a strong momentum with large orders from emerging sectors. That was the highlight. And, and also revenue based, based on our backlog as well as book to bill, uh, we are seeing a steady uh, execution across the market segments. Because of our operational efficiencies and many measures we have been taking over the years, now we are seeing the convergence into our both top line as well as bottom line, and our uh, profit after tax expanded by 50% due to the revenue mix and superior order execution by our 18 divisions. Operational EBITDA was up 64% for the quarter, and uh, and board which was which met yesterday, they uh, unanimously uh, uh, you know approved the interim dividend of. Indian rupees 10.66 per share. On the portfolio side, uh, we introduced uh, part of our motion low voltage uh, motors, uh, IEC low voltage IE for cost iron super premium efficiency motors. And as I mentioned, motion division and our motors division is all about providing more energy efficiency to industry and infrastructure projects across the country. And that's why we continue to announce our portfolio and localize it. And this is having a good uptake, especially among the customers who are more and more conscious about sustainability agenda, as well as making sure cost input on account of energy is optimized in their setups, because that's one of the big cost elements for all the industries. And very, uh, you know, this, this uh, consciousness is spreading quite rapidly across the industry, and we are direct beneficiaries of it. And also, we introduce IE3 aluminum motors for reliable and energy-efficient solutions. Uh, we had an introduction of Aquamaster, electromagnetic flow meters supporting India's water industry. As you know, water industry is expanding uh, quite well in the country, and our portfolio of electromagnetic flow meters find uh, a, a very good uh, installed base in uh, across the countries and across the states. We celebrated the milestone of 100 years of anniversary of ABV miniature circuit breaker. You may know that the circuit breaker that you use in your houses and your offices, ABV is the pioneer of this device, which was developed by us in ABV Stotts in Germany. And, uh, and this is something which marked the 100 years anniversary of it. And the same products and same technology is, which is produced in our highly automated plants in, in the country in Bangalore, is also available to Indian consumers. Uh, as part of expanding our partnership, we partnered with WIT India to deliver advanced tunnel ventilation solutions, enhance safety and operational efficiency in India's infrastructure projects. So it's not only the product selling, but also these tactical and strategic partnerships wherein the players who are expanding and helping build the nation's uh, infrastructure, we continue to partner with them. On sustainability in practice, now we have a very good agenda across all of our locations. Now we are also training our suppliers, and more than 300 suppliers across 14 divisions in sustainability and green products uh, participated, and we continue this because we will make sure not only scope one and scope two, but scope three emissions are also properly uh, captured and contained uh, across the value chain, across our supply chain. Now, just to give you a data point that IEC low voltage motors installed base for last five years saved about 500 gigawatt hour annually, and it is matching the state of the yearly energy consumption. So that's the impact because we may see them as a product, but I think when you use the right product in the heavy uh, energy uh, I infrastructure and the industrial projects or anywhere the consumption, whether it's in HVAC, if you use the right motors, right uh, drive, which ABB has, I think it directly contributes to uh, energy saving. And that means that much of less energy has to be produced or that energy which is saved can be deployed more productively in other areas. Next slide, please. So just to give you a bit of a, a breakdown of what we saw in the market, uh, we see positive market momentum across segments. Uh, I think this has been developing over a period of time, but now the momentum is there, and uh, that's where it reflects in our orders, uh, as you have seen and we talked about, plus 13%. Our export 
orders also grew by 39%, uh, largely contribution from specialty chemical service orders from an energy major. So, uh, but uh, we are seeing more and more our divisions are participating in the exports, but we are very, uh, very, very selective and uh, we are making sure that whatever we deliver out of ABB India and India has a good reputation in the minds of the customers who receive our products and solutions globally. In the power distribution energy, uh, we are seeing uh, much deeper uh, adaption of power equipment, compact substations, switch gear, renewable energy. Uh, so these are the, across the segment, the power distribution, uh, the business uh, uh, run by electrification by Ganesh, I think is seeing a very good adoption, as well as in the low voltage run by, uh, by Kiran, I think that is seeing a very, very good adoption across. Data center has been a highlight for the last quarter. We we very we got uh, some very large uh, contracts uh, uh, relative to the past, and we have been talking about these data center as a segment for the last three four years, and we find that it is now really converging into a good scale up as we go forward. Uh, discrete uh, automation, uh, automotive sector, uh, the investments are driven by EV, and there again we are participating. And same thing, demand from energy industry, metals and minerals and mining are consolidating. Though they have not been participating in past, but in last few quarters we see now the momentum is building up there, especially from the customers who look for our products and services. In the transport side, traction and propulsion equipment for railways and metros, they continue to have a very good uh, uptick in our order intake and also sitting in our backlog, which, is, which has grown 23% to about 9,500 crore compared to uh, same quarter last year. Next slide, please. So if you see the uh, first half uh, of the year highlights, uh, we have a double-digit top-line growth aided by all divisions. It is not by one division or few. It is across all the divisions, which, and also we are seeing a cyclicity across 23 market segments we participate. There are some market segments which are very strong in one quarter, and then the leadership is taken by the other segment. So that's the resilient uh, business model we have in the country, wherein we participate with multiple divisions, which have multiple, uh, which have the 18 business models, and then when we participate in a spread of the market segments, uh, this gives us a very good uh, resilience at the, uh, to ensure the growth as well as uh, execution of our contracts. Uh, so, in the case of uh, EPS, we have expanded by 67%, as you can see, and cash has grown by 19%, so we continue to be a debt-free company uh, with the good uh, cash uh, on our balance sheet. So, just to give you some flavor about where our products uh, and solutions are finding their place, uh, transportation and mobility system, if you focus on uh, propulsion equipment for Indian Railways, Traction order including for motors in metro rail in segment in three cities, robotics application of a production line upgrade for an EV major, uh, passenger vehicle auto major. And then in the industry, uh, you know, the efficient power distribution solution for a data center major, uh, which is the global major, which is expanding rapidly. And this is a trend we see it continues given the data consumption by uh, for the country and the policy infrastructure which demands that the data has to be stored within the country, this, this, this particular market segment has a, I think, a very long runway ahead of us and it is just at a starting point in my point of view. Uh, same way in the terminal automation for energy major, compact substation or to switch gear and metals industry and of course uh, analyzers and emission monitoring solution for an EPC. So these are some of the examples just to give you what industry is consuming from us, just as a top shot example. And also on the decarbonizing and sustainable operations, there's an uptick in that area. Like a, for a hydrogen project, we have supplied switch gears. And also for a four, four gigawatt solar project in one of the largest solar parks in Gujarat, uh, our medium voltage switch gear has been selected and being installed. And of course, we have modular high voltage motors for a super critical carbon dioxide extraction for Middle East energy major. So what you see here is uh, you, you, our solutions go number of places in different shapes and forms, and that creates a collective demand for us. Next, please. 
the core uh, reason why in last three years we have been growing 27% CAGR, uh, I think is because how we connect with our customers. And we continue to connect deep uh, in the market and the market segments. And we continue to find new partners and continue to find new customers and convert them into ABB solutions. So we, this is an ongoing activity and we, anytime we speak with each other, you will always find either a partner or a customer activity is going on in tier two, tier three cities so that it takes us to the deeper end of the market. And we know that despite uh, this growth rate, which is multiple of the GDP growth here in the country, we still have a very good uh, uh, runway ahead as we engage more with the marketplace. Next, please. Just to give you a color to which are the market segments we, uh, we participate, and you can see we have uh, tabled them in un, uh, under high growth, moderate growth, and moderate low growth. And the moderate low growth still contribute quite heavily to us in our businesses, uh, to, in our volume. And the enhanced and the focused market segments, these are the new market segments we picked up and developed, say, 2015 or 16 onwards. And this is something which we are uh, kind of reaping the benefits of growth because these have come on their own. And that's what we continue to do is to keep on adding high growth market segments as we uh, grow forward. Next, please. Now, this every every uh, call we take a theme, and today we have taken energy and uh, transition as a theme, which of course is seeing a, a good investment uh, uh, from energy majors as well as new the business houses who want to be in this uh, area for a long term. And, uh, and there's a good investment potential here. So we have actually tabulated renewable energy generation, green energy co corridor, EV and charging infrastructure, and green hydrogen, and certain data. That's how we read in the marketplace. So I'll let it be with you in terms of, uh, uh, you know, available as a data points. But from ABB's point of view, our offerings include medium voltage and low voltage switch gears in these segments, low voltage components, battery energy storage systems, motors, electrical drive train packages, rectifiers, electrolyzers, wind turbine controllers, automation and instrumentation, and robotics and digital solutions. So those these segments will grow at their own pace uh, based on the development, but our portfolio, which is distributed across our business area and division, this is, these are the pro typical product packages that go into these new market segments we are focusing on where the investments are expanding. In terms of sustainability in practice, uh, we are tracking our goals and it's a very well-focused program. And here in scope one and two GHG emissions, we are, uh, you know, we are, we are, we are ahead of plan. Uh, water recyclability is our focus. We have already converted number of units into number of locations into water positive. That is, we put more water in the ground than we take it. And we have already reached uh, zero waste to landfill unit in one of the locations. And by 2024, uh, and we will have two locations out of five which will be uh, zero waste to landfill. And that's our commitment that while we grow and while we do work, this is the right thing to do for a country like us wherein we are water stressed and as well as waste needs to be managed in a more meaningful, more thoughtful way. So we will continue to do our contribution. Now, our uh, margins have expanded, our profitability has expanded over a period of time. So has our CSR funds, and we feel very pleased about it because one is to deliver higher margins uh, to, the, to the stakeholders, but at the same time, we have other stakeholders in the society. We are able to spend much, much more. So compared to a couple of years back, now we are spending almost twice as much as we had part of our kitty to spend, and we feel very good about it. And our focus is in on the education and skilling and communities and uh, uh, environment. And plus also we contribute in the infrastructure wherever we feel we can make it safer for communities or safer for the factory workers, safe, safer for the women to come and participate in the industrial area. So that's why you can see in the Nella Mangala, we are doing the rural road upgradation. Pinia, we have done a lot of upgradation. And every year, we continue to add in. So you put a few more years, and then you suddenly see that the whole area gets transformed. Yeah. So I will stop here, and I'll hand it over to C.K. Cesar, or uh, C.K. Cesar, our CFO, to take you through some financial highlights. Thank you. Thank you, Sajeev. <clears throat> 
So, uh, morning to all of you once again. So, just to talk about how this will perform when we see the uh, number side of it. I think this has been um, a good quarter again, once again. So, therefore, we could say proudly that we have a consistent track record of delivering performance, which is um, better than the previous quarters. And uh, hopefully, I think uh, uh, we should be able to continue that for some more time. That's what we see. So orders, we were uh, we uh, we locked 3,400 crores of orders, which is 13% uh, up. Our backlog, as MG was mentioning, is 9,500 crores. This also has almost 40 to 50% in the 40% I would roughly say, which is about projects and long gestation projects. And the balance 50 to 60% comes from short cycle orders, which will be executed over the next um, six to nine months period of time. Revenues, I think uh, uh, 2,800 crores up by 13%. Um, uh, we could have done more. I have been uh, here in the sense we uh, we could have done almost 200 crores more, but I think that was more because of an alignment with the project schedules, which was important for project businesses to do, and also because it was elections time and also the budget time, which was there, so people had uh, delayed the decisions. Uh, that means we did not lose any revenues. It was only a postponement of the revenues with the customers, uh, which was very momentary for the particular matter. So <clears throat> I think this should probably answer uh, a question as to why did we not do revenues. I thought that's why I put a bit of more color on this topic. So profit before tax, I think um, this is an, uh, uh, <clears throat> 594 crores, right, and 51% uh, is up and which is also the same as far as PAT is concerned, which is 50% up. So consistently, if you look at it, so we have been um, delivering the profit as well as the revenue numbers quarter on quarter. So our, and, uh, this has resulted in a good pickup of earnings per share. And also in terms of uh, how much do we convert this profit to cash, we always make sure that we are there at 100% That's what we see. The next slide. Uh, just to do a bit of a... Um, uh, second level deep dive because we still have a, um, another level which is third level which will come more <laughs> interesting going forward. So but I think on, on the first uh, second level, I think orders, we were flat on base orders and that was basically the reason why we said um, the second quarter had quite a few macro un, uh, in, uh, results which were impacting them. And But we were successful in large orders which came from uh, basically from emerging sectors. Uh, that was something which was uh, pretty strong in a way. Uh, <clears throat> and it is also in line with Q124 where we do. So 13% up on orders, but sequentially we were minus 5% and that's more because of the base orders which remain flat. Um, the order backlog, we discussed about it, 9,500, 23% up. So uh, we have done a clear scrutiny of what the order backlog quality is. We are confident that would be executed as per the delivery schedules agreed with the customer. So therefore, um, we don't have to see any risk in this particular topic. Uh, revenues, 2,800 crores. It was, I mean, uh, all the revenues um, grew definitely across all the divisions. So we were 13 percentage up. And uh, as I said, that we, uh, we missed 200 crores, and that's more because of uh, uh, the reasons what I mentioned. And uh, profit before tax, yes, 21 percentage, probably the highest in the, in, uh, in the quarters what we saw till now. Right, and um, uh, coming to the cash balance, we have 4,872 crores, and this is after paying the dividend which we paid in the month of May. So we work with an, uh, we have workforce of 4,700 people to deliver this revenues. So this slide we repeat uh, because there is always a question. So if the group gives a color to India, and uh, how does India numbers uh, stack up? So if you look at the left slide of the slide, I think growth, uh, uh, this states what group sees from India. So it looks at third-party customers who, um, who give orders both to ABB India Limited, to other ABB companies in India if it is there, and also ABB companies which are outside India. So when we take this, which is called a demand side view from India, uh, the growth is roughly around about 2 percentage. But when you look at India, India, which consists of customers who uh, give orders to India, IBB India Limited, both from outside India as well as from India. So we are 13 percentage as what I mentioned. Next slide, please. <coughs> so uh, EBITDA performance, I think um, uh, <coughs> we are 19 percentage at this point of time, and PBT 21 percent is what we said. And if you look at the PBT bridge from 15.7 for the last quarter, same time, and uh, to 21 percentage, 
uh, of course, the <coughs> volume and mix contributed to be the uh, major portion of the improvement with 6 and a half, 6 and 6.3 percentage coming from their improvement. And of course, we did have other expenses which increased because uh, we are uh, delivering more revenues, the growth phase is on, and therefore uh, it's likely definitely higher. And uh, But we want to tell you that there was a forex gain, it's a swing of uh, 30 crores compared to quarter on quarter. Right, and that's something which uh, also was an important element to factor in as far as the results are concerned. But is it a um, uh, <clears throat> major one? According to me, it is not. So it uh, it doesn't matter much because the number of the value which we are talking of profitability is far higher on that. So overall, I think we did 21 percentage at 595 crores. So I think the drivers for that was that definitely better margin orders. We did have positive price movements across. And we did uh, benefit from a steady material cost, uh, material, uh, material commodity uh, cost at this point of time. Yeah, the next slide, please. So, about uh, how did, how are we doing on the uh, profitability side? The next slide. Right? <clears throat> so, uh, this is a I mean, uh, level three deep dive. So, to understand how the structure of a P and L is at this point of time. So, our um, revenues, we did talk about it. So uh, the other income consists majority of uh, interest income, which is uh, coming from the deposits, what we have of almost 4,800 crores. And the material cost is uh, now 57 percentage at this point of time, compared to uh, 63 what we were earlier and 59.8 in the previous quarter. And the other expenses are more or less in line with what we have delivered in the previous quarter. And only change is about exchange and commodity variation. We had a gain of 9.5, but the swing between 9.5 to an, uh, a cost of 29.8 is almost uh, uh, 40 crores, as what was mentioned earlier. So other elements of depreciation and uh, minor interest cost and discounting, etc., remain pretty, pretty much stable. So the ETR is 25.5 as what we see. So overall, I think um, uh, <clears throat> this is something what, uh, how did we perform? But other important thing which I would like to share with you is I think there could be a bit of a um, question mark. So how did we really go down and what is contributing from 63.5 material cost to 57.2? Just to give you a bit of a color, I think there are certain factors which are uh, external and there are certain factors which are internal. So when I want to say uh, which is external, we are talking of a uh, revenue mix, a price push to the markets, what we are talking of. And of course, on the design optimization and the uh, uh, SCM savings, what we have. So this roughly contributed to um, a 3.6 percentage of the movement which happened, and the internal levers which we have in terms of uh, operational efficiency, in terms of uh, um, uh, capacity utilization, sort of stuff, contributed for the balance percentage, which we moved from 63.5 to 57.2. So this is something which I think could be interesting. And this is actually spread out across all business units in different forms. And not all businesses had the same, right? But I think it, de it depends on how business is positioned in the market as well as in its own operation locally. The next slide, please. <coughs> so we go to a bit of a color on uh, how did uh, electrification, motion, um, <coughs> process automation, and robotics perform. Uh, motion in um, electrification in this quarter uh, had did 1,432 crores of orders, right? And uh, and sequentially they are slightly lower, but I think on an uh, average they are pretty much ahead of the curve as what we see, right? And uh, Q124 why it was higher because normally as you know that's a financial year for quite a few uh, Indian customers locally. So that's the time when they would exhaust the budgets and say for the ordering is more um, uh, speedier than what it used, what it's normally for the other quarters. And uh, when it comes to uh, revenue, so we are, they are up, they are at 1,121. And here is what I said, that there was a bit of an alignment and uh, definitely a hold back of the customers, assuming that the budgets could have certain favorable impacts for them. So, uh, and uh, profit before tax um, and interest, I think because led by the revenue mix and uh, good margin orders which were executed and also an um, operational efficiencies impacting them positively, uh, and, uh, they, they were able to deliver 23 percentage of uh, PPIT. <clears throat> the order backlog is 39 percentage up from 2,000 crores what this was last, uh, last year at the same time. Next slide. Uh, coming to motion, this very interesting segment, that's what you all know. 
and it's directly relatable to the industries to which we are catering to. So motion was up in orders with 18 uh, percentage. Revenue is pretty much aligned with what the backlog execution patterns are. So 17 percent is up over there. And uh, an order backlog, an all-time high of 3,930. I think you should be aware that this order backlog has a major order contraction converters from a railway segment, and that service long-term service order as well. So I think if we uh, sort of you know elimin eliminate that, you will see the same amount of increase um, in the uh, order backlog as compared to the uh, orders what they have received. That means. Um, on a real-time base volume, it should be 20-22 percentage higher compared to what you see, right? And PBIT, again, a uh, fantastic traction as what I would see, 23 percentage. Of course, they did have a uh, positive impact also of the foreign exchange coming in over there for the momentarily at this point of time. But I think it's a cycle which always uh, tells when, uh, sort of, you know, outcome when comes back to the balance sheet at a later date. Process automation. So uh, <clears throat> last quarter, we um, definitely last year, same quarter, we did have certain major orders from the uh, metals uh, sector and oil sector, so which were not there in this particular quarter. So we did 533. So we are slightly less compared to the quarter to quarter. And but whereas revenues, uh, given the good backlogs what they have, I think we are 24% uh, up on uh, revenues and uh, profitability uh, tracking well at 16% mainly aided by services revenues and export revenues over there and, and uh, efficient project execution and the mix from higher contribution orders, quantum margin orders. Next slide. So here is robotics, which is a uh, very fantastic um, uh, market segment which all of us know. So and, um, they are uh, back on track with 157 crores of orders this, year, this quarter. Uh, slightly lesser revenues than these uh, because these order backlogs what has been uh, currently um, uh, received will fructify into uh, revenues going forward and they track at an um, <coughs> profitability of uh, uh, 15, 14, 15 percentage at this point of time. So I think there's also a good contribution of service which helps them uh, boost the margins as of them. Next slide. This is the last slide. I think uh, this is just to show how does our business model look at. So I think if you look at it, so um, uh, we are basically a product oriented uh, structure as what we see with EL and uh, um, uh, MO forming part of almost 75 percentage of our uh, 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 total business model. And uh, with, from the offering side of it, again, it represents because EL and MO being product businesses majorly, so then we are 76 percentage, 75 percentage of uh, product businesses and 12 percentage of services and exports, uh, similarly 12 percentage. And when we come to geographies, we said that we, uh, we our uh, exports increase, and that's why you could see the percentage of uh, orders also and looking, our revenue is looking at 12 percentage and 88 percentage from um, the uh, uh, from the domestic uh, revenue, from the domestic customers. So overall, I think uh, we are primarily focused on um, India. So India is in a sweet spot as what we say in terms of growth trajectory as well as the investment capex cycle uh, which has kicked in at this point of time. So therefore, we feel that we are in a position where we could take leverage of the investment climate which is developing in front of us. So that's it from as far as the commentary is concerned. I think we have another probably 30 minutes to go, right, for uh, Q&A. Michelle, we can open up the uh, call for Q&A. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning, sir. And congratulations on another status state of results. My first question of base order, sir. Of course, base order has been slightly weaker in the first half. Are we seeing uh, increasing inquiry levels going up post the election? So, uh, so I think uh, Sanjeev here. Uh, so we we did have this uh, election as well as budget uh, period uh, coming. So I think there was a bit of a, a slowdown in the marketplace. Uh, but uh, going forward, 
uh, I think we can give you a more granular view from our uh, business heads, uh, starting with MO. Uh, Sanjeev, the question is, uh, how do we see inquiry build up going forward, followed by Kiran, Ganesh for ELDS, and Subrata. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the question, and thanks, Sanjeev, for this, uh, giving this opportunity to answer this. Uh, as we all know, that uh, now the government is formed and it's quite stable, things are in the right shape. And uh, the growth story of India is very much uh, pre predominant still. So we feel that be it heavy industry, light industry, transport and infrastructure, all this piece where ABB is present in, uh, in each and every segment, we have a strong conviction that this will show a steady growth path. Of course, there would be some cycles, some headwinds, uh, uh, maybe some global impacts, uh, how the world is behaving. But I think underlying strength is for India is that we will see opportunities coming up as we move forward. So that's from my side, Sajid. And uh, same question for you, Kiran, for the EL. Thank you. And uh, see, from my side, uh, there is uh, adding to what Sanjeev Varoka said. Uh, what I would like to say is um, we did see some challenges in the building sector, and uh, we have also have some information where the building sector could have degrown by almost 18% as a market in terms of the pickup of apartments, especially in the residential side, and that could be of many reasons uh, in the macroeconomics as well as it is also what we saw was some base order decrease probably due to the delay um, from maybe because of budgets and things like that due to elections. So that's what we saw in some of the sectors of the market. But what we see um, is also uh, probably the tier two and the tier three cities coming up. So that's what we see as on the positive side, which could pick up in terms of the base orders. Thank you. Ganesh uh, from the electrification distribution solution side. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, when it comes to the distribution solution, uh, means, uh, obviously there was a natural uh, hold of the delay uh, due to the election and because the budget was not announced, uh, because some of the infrastructure project where uh, government has to uh, really clear the cash to the EPC people, but uh, uh, if we see to the pipeline, uh, we see a very strong pipeline which is coming from industry as well as the upcoming segment, and we can see uh, increase in the base order in the coming uh, coming quarter if you look it at the pipeline. Thank you, Ganesh. Uh, Subrata, from the robotics, uh, from the uh, your segments which you cater to, how do you see the pipeline going forward? Hmm. Uh, so, uh, good morning. Uh, from robotics point of view, I see that um, uh, it's a constant growth uh, in the market. I never seen because of election uh, market was flat or going down and again going up. It, it is not like this. It's a constant growth. Still, automotive holds major share of robotics. Uh, however, uh, I, I feel that the small customers, base customers are growing. Number of robot sales in Indian market has grown like more than 50% between 22 and 23, and I feel that uh, that uh, uh, growth will be uh, uh, constant in coming years. Thank you, Subrata. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, Mohit, you got the sort of the okay. color from all the divisions um, representatives. I think which is more comprehensive in a way. Understood, sir. My second question is order inflow for us versus the group within India. Is that a market share inching us compared to our group companies for Indian orders? Or are we producing more products so Indian companies are so Indian companies are getting more share, more share? I didn't uh, get your question, Mohit. So my question on the order inflow for us versus the group. Our number is thirteen percent up, right? Uh, compared to group for Indian orders what three two percent up, right? My question is, is the market share inching us? Are we getting more orders from the global export orders because they're producing more products indigenously? Is it the right understanding? So I think we haven't established any correlation and we don't pay too much attention to that because that's more of a flow which happens based on how the group companies and the global uh, players may be exposed, right? So other channels would be exposed. So what we can 
confidently say is about the India numbers, how we are exposed directly to the market, and uh, those numbers are more predictable uh, from our point of view. So we haven't established a correlation. Maybe there's something we might have to think about. Hmm. I'm just to thank you. I'm just to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. My compliments on a very strong quarterly performance. Uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, over the last five years, the EBITDA margin reported by the MNC parent were higher than ABD in India. Uh, over the last couple of quarters, and particularly Q2, ADB India EBITDA margin was higher than the parent. Your comments on, you know, uh, the sustainability of this phenomena given ADB India pays royalty technology fee to the parent and there are imports that ADB India does from the parent. That's the first question. Uh, the second question is, uh, you know, we've seen large orders and long cycle orders from uh, energy and core industry segments which contributed to order inflow uh, during the quarter. Um, uh, could you give us a sense on uh, how is the mix of base orders and large orders uh, in the order book roughly, and what is your uh, sense on uh, uh, sort of what what kind of execution schedule uh, does it entail uh, across base and large orders in your four reportable segments? Thank you. Sir, you can take the second question first. So I think I have already replied the second question, but for the sake of benefit, I said that the uh, order backlog, which is uh, roughly around about 9,500 crores today, has uh, 40 to 45 percentage of long cycle and project orders. So that's number one, right? And that gets executed over a period of time, and normally the project execution of uh, um, the execution of projects normally hover on about 15 to 18 months, depending upon to which sector they uh, they cater to. And the balance, 55 to 60 percentage, is short cycle orders, and that go over an execution period of six to nine months roughly, right? So I think uh, that's how uh, we see uh, uh, Smith. Sure. Okay. On the first question about group and uh, ABB uh, catching up and exceeding the uh, performance uh, in India, so I think uh, both are not comparable because group is exposed to all markets of the world, and they have to see the uh, cyclic nature of uh, China, Europe, Asia, Americas, and they get the sum total effect of whatever is happening across the uh, globe. And it's a, it's a credible uh, performance relative to where ABB Group used to be and our ABB way, which was implemented by our group CEO, uh, Bjorn, uh, Bjorn, who, of course, uh, uh, now has moved on and new CEO is installed from 1st of August. I think he did a credible job uh, globally, and we are all thankful for to him for for the discipline uh, and the and the focus he brought for us. As far as India story is concerned, is as we say, it's an India story. It's an India story is about emerging market story, uh, which uh, should be seen in its own merit and its own uh, isolated effect. And here. The results that we are getting now for last few quarter quarters, they are not made recently. They are in making for last four or five years. It's a sum total or number of things that converge so that you get an effect out of operations. And one is that you get good quality orders from the market. You have much more broad-based market segment participation. You have much more broad-based geographical participation. You do higher localization as we go. You expand your portfolio of offerings in the market, and you also make sure uh, that all the localization being done by our OEM partners, our machine builder partners, we participate in them so that a country's import bill starts reducing. So it's a kind of a combination effect, and on top of it, the productivity measures that you take in your shop floors, and you continue to reduce your cost, and also make sure that you make only meaningful investments so that the uh, businesses are able to expand meaningfully and participate in the market growth and the volume growth. So I think when you align all these value chain elements in a good way, and we are lucky and we are very uh, thankful to our leadership of the division, each one of them have been uh, doing it very well, and they have taken the opportunity in the last uh, few years to reach where we are. So it's a effect of, collective effect of all the work that has been done in the past. And market is very supportive at this point of time. 
and also there is a much higher appreciation of higher quality products in the market relative to past wherein the customer used to compare high quality products with the cheaper versions but post covid the mindset of the customers has changed and they look for more reliable products rather than cheaper products so that's where again it is sweet spot for us so that's why you have seen 27% uh, cagr growth in last 3 years and when you process them in the volumes in the capacity you have and you put more productivity in the shop floor you start seeing the rolling results into the uh, bottom line so that that's what that's how we read it uh, how the situation is yeah, just adding to what sanjeev mentioned i think we also seen a consistent growth in service revenues which is very important for us to have the margins right so that's something uh, which was a bit dull government of due to covid and other topics which has in the country had to deal with now that we have all passed that i think that is also a very effective contributor and just for information we have dedicated service business units in each of these particular divisions catering to the installed base of the country so therefore the focus is very sharp very wide spread across the market with more innovative solutions so that is something which is uh, uh, aiding the uh, profitability also so a lot of customers are on through opex cycle which affects the service are upgrading their installed base that shows up in our uh, service business which again is a high quality business for us thank you so much for the detailed uh, answers very clear wish you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jonas putta from birla mutual fund please go ahead uh, good morning gentlemen and uh, again congratulations on a great set of numbers uh, and not just this quarter probably now four quarters running uh, my first question was somewhat similar to what the previous participant said uh and i'll try to sort of approach it from a different angle so if you can sort of talk about uh, you know uh, on which products particularly are seeing such a superior pricing power you know and i would appreciate if you can give us slightly more nuanced understanding to the extent possible on the sales mix because if i were to sort of rationalize you know all the reasons mentioned in the press release for higher profits something does not seem to add up because you know your service and export revenues as a percentage of sales is the same as last year so they have grown at the same pace as the console entity has grown second you know your scale efficiencies or operating leverage is not visible because employee cost and other expenses uh, growth in both these line items are higher than your sales growth this quarter so that effectively leaves us with largely pricing power uh as commodity costs have largely remained flat in this period and you know the nu- nuance that i'm sort of looking at is because sir on the process automation side the presentation mentions that you know given that energy as a percentage of sales within that segment was higher and hence we've been able to reflect this kind of margins and our understanding was on the energy side there's another mnc that sort of was a market leader so have you sort of gain market share have you localized so some more nuance would really be appreciated across at least el mo and and process automation longish question but but would appreciate your answer on this so uh, jonas i think uh, <clears throat> uh, to maintain the profitability and the performance of the company it is important that we have the secret sauce with us number one okay so we cannot be diverging <laughs> Okay. By business, by divisions, and all the stuff, which is the interest of all of us. Okay, that's number one, and we maintain it every uh, very consistently. Okay, number one, and number two. But I think I gave you a bit of a color as to why did uh, you you did a nice breakdown of the P&L on uh, P&L, looking at the expenses and all the stuff, right? So I think the major contributor, if you look at it from the uh, structure of the P&L, you could see the largest gain has been. due to reduction in the material cost where we have moved 6 percentage of almost 61 62 63 levels to 57 57.5 right and i did touch upon this as to how did we gain this material cost improvement i did say that we did it was a combination of both uh, externally led actions and internally led activities initiatives as well right so i said that um from the external led actions with respect to uh, accessing different markets different uh, um, uh, <clears throat> customer base 
and also with the variety of uh, uh, the mix of the services and exports and the margins thereon, I think we got almost uh, uh, 300 basis points or 3 point, uh, 350 basis points in over there, right? So three and a half percentage over there. And then when it comes to what are the internal-led initiatives in terms of uh, uh, supply chain, in terms of um, localization, capacity leveraging, and all these stuff, and also uh, looking at uh, how do you uh, mitigate the risk on projects and uh, um, uh, <coughs> long time so long term service orders, right? So there we gained almost under the balance three percentage, right? So I think these are the factors. So now, uh, will these factors uh, sort of, you know, uh, play out the same going forward? Right. I think there is a limit to which you could always expect these particular improvements to happen. So uh, the what will remain is definitely um, uh, the advantage of a higher capacity, the leverage which you get because of more revenues and the uh, better cost uh, ratios which we have, and that's something what we'll do. So I think going forward, this would sort of you know stable out in an in environment as what we are playing today. Got it. Uh, so my second question was on the share of uh, I3 and I4 motors in our, in our CY23 sales and uh, in our first half. So, you know, what percent of our motor sales largely comes from these two uh, product lines given that we are further expanding our offerings here? Uh, you know, even a rough cut ballpark number would help and that's my final question. Thank you. Sanjeev, Sanjeev Arora, who is here is eager to cushion to reply to your question, so he will give you all information. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 first of all, uh, uh, you know, this uh, subject is very close to my heart, and uh, our customers have shown a great confidence in our motor business. And if we see all more than half of our production, that means uh, roughly 52 to 53% of our production is of i3 i4 motors even though as per norms in india as per minimum efficiency norms we are still at i2 as a country and this clearly shows that uh, you know we are uh, serving the customers their causes of sustainability we are uh, you know really partnering them in their goals of energy saving as well so giving you the perspective uh, of production and means anything else if you want to ask please go ahead uh, uh, this is helpful thanks and all the very best for the future thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. the next question is from the line of amit mahavar from ubs please go ahead yeah hi um so hi sanjeev and shudar uh, congratulations on a great uh, structural journey on margins beyond you can see on um, just input cost and benefit, etc. Um, first question is on um, capacities. Um, we have some major segments, right, like car distribution units for data center, uh, propulsion spots in high speed and metro, isolators and circuit breakers for a lot of new applications, including hydrogen that you've highlighted. Um, next three to five years, um, when we plan our capacity creation, um, uh, which are the areas where we will see, you know, Maximum capacity uh, creation, uh, it can highlight. That's my first question. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Yeah, so just to give an overview, you know, we are in the 74th or 75th year of manufacturing in the country. So that means we had a long uh, uh, time to set up the manufacturing facilities, and it is always uh, ahead of the curve what the market is asking and what we need to offer. So what happens is our manufacturing expansion is always incremental in nature. So whatever we expand is always incremental to continue to either, uh, you know, in, within the same space you have more better productivity measures by automation, robotics, etc., so that we can produce from the same space more. That's one. And the second is we continue to, uh, you know, sectionally expand the uh, plants in the same location. So that's a kind of a nature of expansion that we have been doing. But going forward, we now are reaching the point given the growth rates we have seen. And at this point of time, all the divisions, when we talk to them, they are quite okay for coming years, right? So we have the capacity that we need. We are already looking at forward for next five to 10 years. 
and there there are certain divisions who want this uh, capacity expansion so you may have seen some announcement that we did yesterday wherein we are adding a plant here in bangalore wherein the units which were relatively small earlier in our business they are expanding at a much rapid pace so we are providing them much larger space and more sophisticated facility not only for indian market because they also have got mandate to do the export so that's the one part which is very clearly uh, which we have uh, gone forward otherwise other areas in el uh, we have a continuous uh, uh, upgradation and expansion in nashik with the lds also in elsp elsb all these are uh, based on the market uh, requirement and uh, gap that we see now and next 3 years i think those ex uh, you know expansion plans are already in place and same thing goes for mo MOTR has expanded substantially in the railway and metro segment. Uh, mo you know, motors, uh, low voltage motors, medium voltage motors, all of them are expanding. So, process automation, as I already mentioned, that they are expanding in the new location. And robotics, we already invested uh, quite well in 2020. So, we already have a state of the art plant there. But then we always keep investing, getting closer to the customers, as well as making sure that we are able to serve them more effectively so in all we have a plan in place mostly incremental but wherever the capacity expansion is required by scale there we go for the newer facilities yeah just to add to what sanjeev said i think uh, you are all aware that we still have land banks in uh, baroda as well as in faridabad right so which is definitely a space where we could add capacity and uh, the uh, capacity expansion what has been announced for pa and this thing will help in unlocking space for the expansion of MOTR as well. So I think that the traction thing also. So that, that could probably answer your question with the large um, impetus on uh, uh, railways and the same order inflows from them. How do we uh, cater to that? And this would help us doing this. So this sort of churn of uh, the volumes from between the locations will help us um, uh, figure out how we could address the uh, growing market. Very helpful, Sandeep and Shiva. And second question is coming from the group. Uh, now, Beyond had a very fabulous um, tenure, which also impacted ABB India materially beyond what the India story ABB management has driven beautifully. Um, the new management uh, seemingly is continuing the you know uh, strategies of the last CEO. Um, but anything that you want to highlight in terms of the way ABB operates is very different from peers like Siemens globally when they think of global factories division wise versus segment wise. Anything that, uh, you know, Sanjeev, you want to highlight, uh, you know, new management, message from the new management, which is worth sharing here. Thank you. So, so as far as the credit for performance, we give it all for India as well as group to beyond. We were just the holder of that strategy and executor of it as uh, disciplined soldiers here in India. And I, and I think each one of us embraced that uh, change. Uh, and I think India is seen. When Bjorn used to visit in India, he saw and he commented that India is the best in case example of the philosophy he wants to promote within ABB. And that's the reason he last year even had the board, ABB group board, came in to see how ABB India operates in a empowered as well as, uh, you know, focused manner. So Beyond was all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, performance. And he had uh, three uh, tier thinking towards the businesses. That is all our division. That you should be stable first. You should be profitable second. And when you are stable and profitable, then you can grow. And I think that discipline he kept for last four and a half years. And that's where you can see all the global divisions, their allocations and their focus was getting the stability, not only overall, but also in each location and each business location, you have to have stability, profitability, and that you do either by portfolio, by management, or your expansion, or also by taking a certain portfolio within the company which are not uh, core to us. So all those things were done. Now, given that we have a, our colleague, uh, uh, you know, uh, Martin Weird, who is now, uh, has taken over a CEO from 1st of August, and he was, by the way, also chairman of ABB in India. He frequents India very well. He knows India very well. So we do feel that going forward, 
we will have a natural uh, support available from the from the group CEO. But the group CEO, as per the chairman's uh, statement, Peter Wozer, uh, he has a mandate for growth. So he has been given a mandate that the growth is the focus for him uh, while maintaining the profitability that group has achieved. And group in last capital market day, if you have noted, they have already given the margin corridor uh, a, you know, ABB group wants to maintain. And on top of it, the mandate for the, for the new CEO is group. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Sanjeev, and good luck uh, for coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a request to all the participants to kindly limit your questions to one per participant. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Srinidhi Karlekar from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers. So two questions actually related. What I want to know is what percentage of your backlog is really a fixed price contract and how much has the price variation? And the second related question is, sir, uh, would you say the part of positive surprise you saw in the material margin uh, is due to commodity stability or commodity deflation from the point of order booking to the point of execution of sales, as well as probably due to the stability of Indian currency uh, from the point of booking of the order to the execution of the order? Otherwise, you would have built some deflation. So those are related questions. Thank you. So let me take this question. So I think uh, I again go back to the color which I gave you on the split of the order backlog between long-term orders and short cycle orders. So long cycle orders are definitely, I said, 40 to 45 percent of the backlog comes from projects and long cycle orders, which as a pro as an mechanism have the price variation process built in because it goes over a long period. So this is basically normal commercial um, uh, terms and conditions. But when it comes to the balance, 45 to 50 percentage of orders, which comes from short cycle orders and which gets executed over a period of six to nine months, I think there in very few cases we have it, but majority of them are fixed price contracts. Yes. So would you say in the beef orders that you do, which is still a very large portion, some of the margin benefit that we are seeing on the material margin is partly because of time of booking, the commodity, what where they are at the time of booking, and how they have been stable or deflating to the point of execution. Yeah, I think we had said that in the past as well. I think the current margin expansion is also due to the advantage of the price, uh, you know higher price at which we book the orders because of the time the material price is higher. I have on basically on the fixed price contracts what we are having, and as they stabilize, you get to have an advantage coming into the balance to the pay and the account. But I think now that the prices are stabilizing at this point of time, as what we see, so the um, now that particular uh, um, uh, difference between the prior and order booking to the execution time advantages will start to uh, thin down going forward. Right. It's a last one, if I may. Uh, so you have a very strong. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, but uh, I would request you to kindly read sure. yeah. the follow-ups. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next question, and um, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last question from the line of Aditya Mungya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was more uh, kind of comparing the amount of uh, value creation that you can do in the motion segment uh, versus uh, the electrification segment. I wanted to get to, to a sense that eventually when things kind of even out on margins, uh, would motion segment, because of its value addition, uh, higher services component, energy efficiency, be having higher margins versus uh, the switch gear driven electrification segment, or would you have a different view? We have a different view. Uh, both motion and electrification are uh, nearly same size. Electrification now being largest uh, division and closely followed by motion. Now, uh, you may have heard us say that they follow the pattern of a fast-moving industrial goods pattern. Uh, just like you are used to SMCG, I think they are moving, following more FMIG model, wherein uh, we do certain products, which are we call it as ETO, engineer to order, wherein we use our own products to create a subsystem and supply. But larger portion of it is is moved as a you know as a product into the market, 
And then you have the value adders with be our partners, OEMs, machine builders who create value in the market. And in a market which is growing rapidly and uh, as, as India is growing, and you have an expansion taking place geographically and in multiple market segments at the same time, these businesses tend to do quite well. And these are high quality products and most of our customers are not only supplying to high end, very high quality, high end supply, end users, but also they are exporting a lot. So what happens is that the price point that is realized by us, it is a well, it's a, there's a willingness to pay for uh, what we supply in the marketplace, right? Uh, which is very different from the retail type of participation you do in certain market segment. But we are talking about mostly our industrial customers, their appreciation of our quality and reliability, availability locally, as well as our, our ability to service them and maintain their uh, products. I think that has a, a kind of a perceived preference for our portfolio. So as far as EL and MO is concerned, we do see they will continue to perform this journey going forward. Uh, but we are not alone in the market. We feel uh, we see the similar trends with the others as well who are participating in this market segment. And uh, I would say this is a early size cycle of India. Uh, not many people have a comparative, but I have a comparative in my career wherein I saw China grow, uh, say right from mid 90s to 95 onwards. And I see India is almost lagging. 20 to 25 years where China was, say, 20, 25 years ago. And we still have another 10, 5 to 10 years ahead of us wherein the growth rate and the demand for our products and solutions will expand. And also, industry is willing to uh, pay for pay for the quality of the product, which is uh, world class. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the response. That was my only question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, so, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that, as that was the last question for today, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. T.K. Sridhar for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Michelle, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for participating in this particular call. Very interesting questions, I could say. I think um, and, uh, hopefully we again meet um, the next quarter with a uh, similar set of results is what we could see. And, uh, and also, um, I wish you a very happy in, uh, quarter closing as well as in uh, uh, good and healthy life. Thank you very much. Right, and I also thank the management who are there with me on this particular call, with whose, uh, without whose support this could not happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of ABB India Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.